JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 2nd. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the financial world was spooked to us once again on Tuesday and during the Asian session uh, Wednesday with equities around the globe um, seeing another day of uh, losses. All the major indices under our radar except one, and as you can see from the graph here, it was the South Korea's KOSPI, where I see of red. And apparently the driver was once again the escalating crisis in Ukraine. Now, after ceasefire talks failed to reach a breakthrough, Russ, Russia launched uh, rockets on several Ukrainian cities, including uh, Kharkiv, while global sanctions against uh, Russia tightened. This is in line with our view. Remember that uh, for the last few days we've been highlighting that it is too early to assume that the sanctions will uh, force Russia to back down or that the talks will uh, bear fruit so early. It is also too early to say that uh, no other nation will intervene with its own army. Therefore, we stick to our guns that the path of least resistance for equities, the euro and the pound, is to the downside. As we noted yesterday, we don't expect the traditional risk-linked currencies Aussie, Kiwi and Lunin to suffer much, as they seem to be drawing support from the rising commodity prices. Oil prices surged searched further yesterday with WTI nearing the 110 zone, which was last tested back in September 2013. Now, as for today, besides uh, the developments surrounding the crisis in Ukraine, Looney traders may also keep an eye to the Bank of Canada decision, um, uh, which is scheduled uh, later in the afternoon. At its uh, latest gathering, uh, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.25% at a time when the financial community was expecting a hike. In the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that the Council expects rates to increase and that the overall economic slug is now absorbed, which means that they are more likely to hit the hike button today. Yesterday, the month-over-month -month rate of the Canadian GDP for December slid to 0% from 0.6%, but the quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized one surprised to the upside. Therefore, with that in mind, and also taking into account the upside surprise in the CPI numbers for January, we doubt that a slowdown in economic activity for the month of December will be enough to prevent officials from pushing the hike button. After all, for the quarter as a whole, the economy the economy has improved. However, a quarter point hike is the market consensus as well, and thus we don't expect it by itself to move much the loony. If indeed the hike is delivered, cut traders may quickly turn their attention to the accompanying statement for clues and hints as to how fast officials are willing to proceed with subsequent rate hikes. If they appear to if they appear willing to proceed with a relatively steep uh, rate path in order to curb accelerating inflation, the loony is likely to gain. Now, besides the Bank of Canada decision, traders of the Canadian dollar may also pay attention to the OPEC plus decision. Despite the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine uh, pushing oil prices above $100 per barrel, the cartel, uh, the cartel and its allies are not expected to accelerate, to accelerate their plan of gradually scaling back their, their supply cuts. This may allow oil prices to rebound and continue. Uh, uh, excuse me. This may allow oil prices to continue trending north, a factor that could prove supportive, supportive for the Canadian dollar as well. 
let's not forget that Canada is uh, the fifth largest oil producing nation in the whole world, while it holds the sixth place in terms of exports. In the US, Fed Chair Jerome Powell will testify on monetary policy before the House Financial Services Committee and again before the Senate Banking Committee tom tomorrow. At uh, the latest FOMC gathering, Powell sounded more hawkish than expected, cementing expectations over a rate hike in March and encouraging market participants to price in around six quarter point increases by the end of the year. Remember that the December dot plot pointed only to three. That said, some may have been they may have been uh, scratching their heads as to whether the crisis in Eastern Europe will weigh against an aggressive attempt to curb inflation. According to the Fed Fund, future, uh, to the Fed Fund Futures, bets on that are, are, are being scaled back. Investors are now pricing in five quarter point increases by the end of the year. However, our view is, uh, is different. The crisis is pushing oil prices higher, which could result in further acceleration in inflation, in inflation around the globe. Something like that could force policymakers to act more aggressively than previously thought. So with that logic in mind, we expect Powell to maintain the view that the March hike is on the table and that more are in the works for the months to come. This is likely to prove positive for the US dollar. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European session, Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for February are coming out, with the headline rate expected to have risen to 5.3% year-over-year from 5.1%, and the core one to jump to 2.7% from 2.4%. Remember that at the press conference following the latest ECB decision, President Lagarde said that inflation remained elevated for longer than previously thought, and that the economy was hurt less than anticipated pa by the pandemic. She also added that the March and June meetings would be essential for evaluating their guidance, which means that they could, after all, decide to lift the uh, rates this year. Now, although she pushed against expectations over a summer rate increase in the aftermath of that gathering, accelerating, infl accelerating inflation could encourage some participants to add back to such bets which could prove supportive for the euro. However, we don't expect any positive reaction in the common currency to last for long as the Russia-Ukraine crisis continues uh, to weigh on the currency. In other words, we still believe that the path of least resistance for the euro is to the downside. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.